Amen. Thank you so much, members of the Nairobi Central Choir. Hope you had a good day today. And before we close the day's activity, we file back <clears throat> in here uh, just to spend a few more moments with the Lord. Were you blessed today? How many of you prayed for a rooster? There you go. There are a lot of oh men. There's a there are a lot of hands up. Lord, give me a rooster. I think every one of us need a rooster to crow when we are troubled and to crow when we are sliding. And um, we just want to give God thanks for His grace and His mercy. So, as I promised you this morning, we are going to continue to work on that part two aspect, second aspect of your theme, get involved. We started this morning, we're going to continue this afternoon. Tomorrow, we're going to ask the question, what happens if God cho chooses you? And you don't want to go. What do you do? What happens under those circumstances? We'll unpack that tomorrow morning when we deal with the subject calling Jonah. And then tomorrow evening, we go deep diving into some prophetic words as we discuss the subject birth pains are on their way. Make sure you're here for, for those presentations. But for this evening, our subject, if we can get it on the screen, call me Paul. Call me Paul. Your heads are bowed as we talk to the Lord. Oh, my Father, another moment has arrived when one more time we go back into your words and one more time we ask for your help so please send your Holy Spirit and teach us all by yourself now we pray in Jesus name Amen I, I will not forget my friends who are online we will not forget you uh, we're delighted to have you if you're just waking up well welcome we will not forget you Call me Paul. So, so you remember that I, I told you <clears throat> the reason why the church that existed at the time when Christ came, the reason why they didn't accept Jesus. And I'm going to go back there in order to introduce Paul to you. Because you will recall reading in your Bible that when Jesus was born, the angel sang to the shepherds and they bypassed the clergy of the day. You remember that? Yes. And so the clergy of the day felt, says Ellen White in the book Desire of Ages, she says that was the first indication of their rejection of Jesus. They felt that God would not bypass them and go and <coughs> speak to these uneducated shepherds out on the field. That was the first indication of their rejection of Christ. So even when the shepherds came and told them, they would not believe it. Okay? So if you, if you read your Bible continually, you will then begin to realize that as Jesus grew up in the community, the, ch the church leadership was against him. You remember that? Yes? Yes, the church leadership was 
against him. And they always find stuff to criticize. They went to the disciples and said, why does your master always eat with sinners? Right? Why, 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 don't you, why, why is that your master don't, don't keep the Ten Commandments? He allow you guys to, to, um, to break corn on the Sabbath. And they're always criticizing Christ. And they, will not, they would never accept him as who he said he was. So you realize then that they were the guys behind his crucifixion because they insisted that they had to get rid of Jesus. So when Jesus started his new movement, by the way, which had a name back then, it, didn't, it wasn't called the Christian church, it was called the Way, W-A-Y. You will see that word in the book of Acts. It was called the Way. So, so when Jesus started his ministry, and then, and then make matters worse, he, he, he boycotted the church and went downtown and got some ordinary men to be his, his disciples. The church was infuriated. And so they now decided they have nothing to do with Jesus. And in fact, they need to get rid of him and get rid of the movement and get rid of the ministry. And that's, that's how the persecution started. And that's why, that's why when they arrested Jesus, they brought him to the, to the high priest's house, Caiaphas. And because the church had no authority to kill him, the church handed him over to the government. Hey, by the way, that's the first time we see church and state working together. Church hanging him over to the state, to Pilate. And of course, we know the story, all right? They killed Jesus. And they thought when they killed Jesus, they had killed the movement. But what they did not, I don't know who, I don't know who advised the devil. I don't know who advised Satan. Because if I was, if I was advising Satan, I would have told him, don't kill Jesus. Yeah, don't. <laughs> if I was advising Satan, I would have told him a couple of things. One, don't kill Jesus. And two, if you try to kill him, don't put him on a cross and don't put him on a hill. Because I've read somewhere that Jesus, if I be lifted up, I will what? Draw all men unto me. So, so the mistake that Satan did, he killed Christ through the church, hoping that he would have killed the movement. And when Christ was dead, 11 disciples sprung up. And then after they killed Christ, they went, the church went after the disciples. Is the church still with me? Yes. They went after the disciples and they slaughtered them one by one, by one, by one, trying to kill the movement. Now, that's how your friend Paul came in the picture. Because one of the fiery preachers of Jesus' church was a little guy named Stephen. You may have heard about him. He was a fiery preacher dedicated preacher for the church and and and, and as he <laughs> and as he preached the word of god the same folks that killed christ and the same folks that killed the rest of the apostles came after him to kill him they arrested him and decided to execute him by stoning and the text says while they had stephen being stoned. I'm going to put the text on the board. I'm in um, Acts chapter 7 verse Acts chapter, Acts chapter 7 verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice stopped their ears and ran at him with, with one accord. Meaning, while Stephen was preaching, they, they were angry with what Stephen was preaching. They didn't want to hear anything about Christ. They didn't want to hear anything about his movement. They didn't want to hear anything that this this church or this movement is preaching. So they ran towards him. And verse 58 says, and they cast him out of the city. They grabbed the preacher. I don't know if he had a pulpit. But they grabbed Stephen and they dragged him out of the city. And they stoned him. And then the text says, and the witnesses. Look at the word. And the witnesses, meaning those who were stoning Stephen, laid down their clothes at the feet 
of a young man named Saul. Meaning, when they were stoning, they took off their, their coats, because they can't stone with coats. So they took off their outer coats, and they rested, all of them, they rested so, <laughs> at, the feet, at the feet of this young man named, named what? Saul. So, welcome Saul in the Bible. That's how he is introduced in the Bible. That's the first time we see him arrive in the Bible. He was the clothes keeper for those who were murdering a servant of God. That's how, we, that's how he is introduced in the text. And the verse 9 says, And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, the text says what happened? He fell asleep. He fell asleep, meaning he died. And that's how we met Paul. He was the clothes keeper. He was the keeper of the clothes for those who were murdering a preacher of God. And then the question you must ask me, why are we discussing Paul? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you think Peter was bad, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> if you think Peter was bad, right, check this guy. Check this guy. If you would not include Peter on your team because of the weaknesses he had, because of his past history, because of what we know about him, check this guy. This is the last person you expect to be on any team that has anything to do with God. So what, what's my message this morning, this afternoon? I just want somebody in Nairobi Central and those of you watching to understand that God is prepared to use any one of us to carry out his work. That's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand, you can't be that bad. You can't be that far down in sin that God can't pick you up, wash you off, hey, 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 polish you down and use you for his kingdom. So this is how we met this guy. Met this guy. Chapter 8, chapter 8 of the book of Acts continues the story. Chapter 8 says, in verse 1, it says, Now Saul was consenting, agreed, was participating in the death of Stephen. Saul. In other words, Saul agreed with the killing. He may not have thrown any stone, but he helped those. Accessory. He would be charged with. Yes. He was consenting. He was, so to, the, to that extent, he's very much a murderer of a servant of the living God. Why would you want a man like that on your team? Well, the text says, at that time, a great persecution arose. Against who? Against the church which was at Jerusalem. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Verse 3. Now, as for Paul, help me read this stuff. Help me read this stuff. One, two, three. He made what? He made havoc of the church. Ah! He made havoc. Another translation says, as for Paul, he destroyed the church of God. How did he do that? The Bible says he would enter into every house. Check you out. If you, be, oh Lord, if you have membership in that little church called The Way, Paul is coming for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Every house he would enter. And, and the Bible says, look at the words. The Bible says, and he would drag, he would drag off men and drag off women and bring them to where? To prison. So, so Paul was a terror in the community. This is what you call a terrorist. This is a lot of mercy. Hey, 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 hey. Paul was a terrorist 
to the church, to the movement. And you have to ask yourself the question, is God crazy or what? How could you possibly consider to put a terrorist among the team? Mm. I watch a little African movie named God Must Be Crazy. Anybody ever watch that movie? You all watch it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely movie, man. Lovely movie. I was in college years ago when I watched the movie. God must be. God, you know, sometimes when I read the Bible sometimes and God does some stuff, I come to that same conclusion. God must be crazy because he does some crazy stuff. Sometimes. Blow your mind out of this world. God does some stuff that we just cannot understand because it does not make sense to us. That's why he declares, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That's why he is God. Because I know for sure, not a single member of Nairobi Central would vote to add Paul to the church membership. He was a terrorist. The folks were scared of him. If they ever heard his name, people start to tremble. That's how, that's how bad he was. And as he continued to harass the church, to imprison the member, to burn down church building, and, and murder those who he wants to murder, as he continued his terrorist strength and shocked and waved through the entire community, the, the, the text tells us that one day, one day he was not just satisfied to hunt down the people in Jerusalem. He spread his wings and he was heading to Damascus to terrorize those in Damascus. And the, and the text says, then Saul, look at that, I'm in, I'm in Acts chapter 1, uh, chapter 9, verse 1. Then Saul still breathing, look at the text, Saul still breathing what? Threats, and what else? Murder. I'm, I'm not lying on the guy, that's what the text says. He's still breathing threats and breathing murder against the disciples of the Lord. Uh, and so in order to carry out his, his, his mission, his murderous mission, he had, a, he, had a, he had a hatred for the church with a passion. By the way, he's a, watch a preacher, he's a member of the other church. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. The church that didn't like Jesus. He's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a staunch member of that church and he being a member of that church has an hatred for this church oh you're not getting the preacher he's a <laughs> he's a member of another denomination that has a hatred for this denomination and he felt that this new denomination shouldn't be in existence so he has dedicated his, his life committed himself to exterminate the church that Jesus is, is organizing. So he decided, he decided, he went to the high priest, watch the preacher, that is his high priest, part of his church, because they, they, they are the established church. Is the church with me? Yes, yeah, stay with me. They are the established church. So he went to his pastor, Put it in your context. And we, what, what he went to the pastor for? To ask for what? Letters from him to the synagogues over in Syria, in Damascus. Why do you want these letters, Paul? Oh, I'm going to Damascus, a eh, 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 pastor, and, and I need a letter. I need an official letter from you so that, so that if I find any of these Little Jesus followers. <laughs> oh Lord, help the preacher. On my way, I need, a I need a letter from you as the head of the church. So if I find any of these Jesus followers, found any who were of the way, that's the name of the church. The new church Jesus started. That's the name. Write it down. If I find any who were of the way, whether men or women, I, I'd like to get your permission to bring them how? 
bound back to Jerusalem. Can one, can one church person hate another church person so much? Can one man has so much hatred inside of him? And if you find that man, could that man possibly be used by God to be part of the team? Oh, let me put it where you can get it. When your pastor and your campaign and your camp meeting organizers came up with the theme that says, Jesus is coming, get involved. Do you think, do you think that they could possibly entertain the idea that a man like this guy to join the church? So he got his letters armed with his letter, armed with authority, feeling empowered. Ha! And he's heading over from Jerusalem to Damascus with his group of terrorist men. This is a Bin Laden situation. And he's hoping that he will find some of these Jesus followers on the way so that he can exterminate them. And the Bible says, on, oh Lord, help the preacher. On his way, on his way. You know, there's a little song they taught me when I was in Sabbath school. There's a father up above looking down in tender love. You know that song? Yeah, there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your feet, watch your feet. Where they go. You know that song? Yes, 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 yes. On his way, armed with these letters to exterminate God's people, to destroy the faithful. There was a father up above. There's a spy in the sky who was keeping track of him. And at a certain point, the, Bible, the, the word of God says, God came down. Oh, Jesus. He ran up into God. He had an, <laughs> hey, hey, Holy Spirit just gave me something. I'm going to share it with you. He had an accident with God. Hey, oh, hallelujah. Hey, hey, he, 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 cra he crashed into God on the road to Damascus. Crashed into God. Knocked off his horse. Thrown on the ground. Casualty was blindness. Here's the text. As he journeyed, he came near to Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. I'm not, preacher is not lying. Preacher is not lying. A light shone from heaven. And he fell, and he what? And he fell to the ground, and he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? <laughs> this is amazing. God is such an amazing God. Man has his letter tied around his waist. <laughs> Armed to execute God's people. God came down. He crashed into God. Knocked him down to the ground. And while he was down there, he heard, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Why are you, why are you persecuting me? Hey, I, that's another sermon. That's another sermon for another time. Because if I had an, enough time, I would have told you, anytime anybody persecute God's church, you are also persecuting God himself. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. God does not make a distinction between him and his church. Oh, because the church is the wife of Christ. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, yeah. So if you touch my wife, you touch me. Hey, why are you persecuting me? And, and he said, and, he, and listen, 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 listen. And he said, he said, who are you, Lord? Well, the answer is in the question. Who are you, Lord? Who, who, who are you, Lord? Ah, 
uh, the answer is already questioned because you already recognize who, who's talking. Uh, and then the Lord says, come on, help me read. I am, anytime Jesus uses those two words, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I established, that's what he said to Moses. I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So when you, when, when you arrest one of my children, when you criticize one of my children, when you abuse one of my children, when you say all manner of things about my, my children in the church, you are persecuting me. Word to the wise of those who criticize God's people. You're persecuting me. Then Jesus says, what you're doing is impossible. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. So, so the text says, so he trembling, ha, he trembling, this powerful terrorist, big and mighty guy, was now on the ground trembling because he ran up into God. Trembling. And he astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Ah, praise the Lord. What do you want me to do? Ah, then the Lord said to him, get up and go into the city. Same city you're heading, Damascus. Keep on your journey. Right? Don't even go back home. Keep on your journey. Go into the city. And you will be told what you must do there. So get up and go. Get up and go. And then Saul arose from the ground. Verse 8 says, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But the text says, they led him by the hand. Which means he was traveling with a party of guys, uh, his terrorist colleague. And, and, and so they led him by the hand. And the reason why they led him by the hand is because he was really blind. Crashing to God and blind. And by the way, listen, listen to me. This is dear, dear for, God blinded him for a reason. Because God had to break him before he can use him. Can I say that one more time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's so big and bad and mighty. Hey, hey, hey. God had to, break, God had to humble him before he can use him. And it's the same thing with you. When you decide to become part of God's team, God has a way of humbling us before he can use us. Come on, church. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, sometimes God has to allow certain things to happen to you, or to fall, throw you off your horses. Sometimes God has to twist you and turn you and humble you before you, he can use you. So God hit him with blindness. And now this mighty guy who left Egypt, who left Jerusalem with his letter still bound around his waist, was now being led blind. Blind. The mighty God. And the text says he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Here's the drama. Here's the drama. This is the drama. So now he reached the city and I don't know where they put him, but here's the drama. There was a certain disciple, disciple, one of Jesus' guys at Damascus named Ananias. And, to, and the Lord said to him in a, in a vision, Ananias, and he said, yes, Lord, here am I. And the Lord said to him, I want you to get up. Watch your text, watch your text. Hey, 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 watch your text. I want, Ananias, yes, Lord. This is one of Jesus' favorite um, disciples. Uh, and Jesus says, I, I want you to get up out of your house and go to a street downtown called what? Straight, straight, straight. And, and when you go down there, inquire in the house of a guy named Judas. Ask for, go into Judas' house. And when you go to Judas' house, ask for a guy named Saul of Tyrus. Ha! For behold, he is what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh. My, 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 my man starts to pray. Hello, somebody. Have you noticed that there's a change already start to take place? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now he starts to pray. So, so, so God told Ananias to, to go find him. What, what's your joke? 
And in a vision, he has seen a man. He says, Ananias, go on, because, because Saul, who is praying, had a vision, and he saw you coming. He saw you laying your hand on him. And when you do that, he will receive his sight. So get up and go find him. Well, Ananias says, hold on, Jesus, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because clearly, you never heard about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ananias says, Lord, 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 this mission I am not too, I'm not too keen on going because you perhaps have not heard about the reputation of this guy. This is a dangerous guy. Here's it, here's it. He said, Lord, and Ananias answered, he said, Lord, I, help me read, I, <laughs> I have heard from many people about this man. What have you heard, Ananias? Well, I've heard how much what harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And, and by the way, and here he has, and I also heard that he has authority from whom? Chief priest to bind all of us who call in your name. And you sending me to that man? You know, this is when I say God must be crazy. Because God does some stuff. God does some stuff that we can't understand. And poor Ananias, trembling, says, God, I don't want to say no to you when you call me for a mission. But this pastor, this is a, this is a dangerous mission. Because I don't know if this guy converted. Hey, Ananias don't know if the guy converted, you know. Only God knows. So Ananias have to learn to Trust God on this mission. Is the church with me? If God send you out, trust God on the mission. So, 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 so the Lord said to him, go, don't worry. For, hey, Jesus. Here's what God says to Ananias. Go, church of Nairobi, read with me. God says what? Go for, for, for he is what? A chosen vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a chosen vessel of mine. Have you seen that? This old good for nothing terrorist is now a chosen vessel of mine. This guy who has blood on his hands is a chosen vessel of mine. This hater of God's people has become a chosen vessel of mine. This murderer, this church, church burner is a chosen vessel of mine. What? God, couldn't you find somebody with a better reputation? No. This is the message to Nairobi. No matter who you are, no matter what your background looks like, no matter what your history contains, no matter how far down in sin you have been, hey, God still sees something in you. Amen. And he's willing to work on that little flame in you. Can I talk to somebody here? No matter how bad a person is, there's a little good in that person. Hey, no matter how bad your son is, there's a little good in him. There's no matter how bad your daughter is, there's a little good in her. No matter how wicked your husband is, there's a little good in him. And God just needs a little spark and he will blow it like a bushfire and transform the person. Because God is an expert on little things. Amen. Even if you have nothing, God can still work with you. He's my chosen vessel. Praise the Lord. I come by to give somebody hope. I don't think you're as bad as Paul. And if God can take Paul and break him, and mold him and change him and appoint him as his chosen vessel. He can do the same for you. He can do the same for you. He's a chosen vessel of mine. Notice what? To bear my name before who? Good. So, G watch this. Watch this. Jesus came to the Jews 
And he sent Paul to the Gentiles. Ha! Huh. And to the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And so, watch me. And so God, in his goodness and in his grace, has taken the worst comeback in society and brought him in to be his chosen vessel. What an amazing God. When the church says get involved, it means every single one of you. No matter what people say about you. No matter what the records are about you. God is willing to use you as a vessel in these last moments. Well, Ananias went his way. Here's the drama. And he entered the house. <laughs> Good guy, Ananias. Good guy. And he lay, he lay his hand on him. And then, here's the part that sweets me. That, I, I just, I, I had to laugh. <laughs> I, I think he's still trembling. But he's, you, you know, you know what they taught me? Um, bra what bravery is? I, 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 I used to think that bravery means a person who has no fear. And they said, no, that's not what bravery is. That's foolishness. Yeah, bravery, a man who is brave is a man who is fearful but still go on. Does that make sense? That's a brave man. A man who has no fear is a real fool. This guy, I think, I think, he's fearful. Are you with me? But he is still going because God sent him. Is the church with me? So when he went to the house, he found the house and he found the guy. Guy was very much there. And I guess he came in and he was trying to be very polite. He says, Brother. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He, he, he says, What? Bro <laughs> Brother Paul? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Brother Paul? When, when, when did this terrorist become your brother? Hallelujah! Brother Paul! Meaning that he also has accepted the man because God gave him permission to do so. Brother Paul, um, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road. No, he didn't appear to you, crash into you. <laughs> that, that Jesus has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Can the church say amen? He says, God, 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 God knew you're here. And God sent me to give you back your sight and to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. But listen, you can't do no work unless you have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't join the team unless you have the Holy Spirit. A prerequisite to get involved is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as bad as this guy was, now that he's clean up, the Holy Spirit came down on him. Can the church say amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And immediately, there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he received his sight at once. And he arose. Help me, help the preacher. And he was arose. And what happened? Got baptized. Can the church say amen? Yes, he has signed up for the Christian Jubilee. Got baptized. That's the next step. When you come in contact with God, when you come into contact with God, when you decided, Lord, I want to be part of you, the next step is to get baptized. That's why we're having a baptism Sabbath morning. And by the way, we have quite a number of people who already signed up for baptism. Can the church say hallelujah? Amen. Amen. That's why the church exists. We're not a Catholic church. We're not a Moravian church. We, we're not an Anglican church. We're the Seventh-day Adventist church. Our purpose is to preach, to teach, and baptize. And if all we're doing is preaching and teaching and no baptism, something is wrong. Wrong. So he got baptized. Notice this guy. And immediately, after baptism, oh Lord of mercy, immediately, this guy started to preach Christ. Amen. He got himself involved. Hey, 
Yeah, he didn't come and sit on the back and say, oh, I just come in the church and I can't, <laughs> and I can't do anything. He, he started preaching immediately that Jesus is the son of the living God. But, as in all cases, not everybody in the church is happy with him. Mm -hmm. you, know why, you know why some people don't come to get involved? Yeah, I, I hope you don't stone me. I want a promise from you. Will you stone me? You sure? Okay. You know why some people don't get involved in church? Other people in the church. Yeah. Other people in the church are stumbling block for those who love to get involved. Put it in the story of the prodigal son. The big brothers who don't want to go into the party when the wayward son come home. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah. Because now that this guy is in the church and preaching, there are some members who's not going to sit down and listen to his sermon. Ah. Uh, it doesn't happen here in Nairobi. It happened back in my country. Yeah. There are some folks who say, I am not sitting down and listen to this guy. So he started to have problems in the ministry. Is the church with me? Yes. He now have people against him from outside and from inside. Then, hear the text. Then all who heard were amazed and they said, these are the grumblers in the church. You know, you know in every church you have some grumblers? Because they can't understand God's grace. God's grace is too, is too amazing for them. Let, let, me, let, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. Let me help you, let me help you. There are so many members of the church who prefer when God is just than when God is merciful. Oh, you still get it. Let, let me help you, let me help you. There are some people who, 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 they like justice more than they like Mercy, yes, 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 yes. And, I, and I've, I've learned something about God. I've learned something about God. And I'm going to teach you something about God. A lot of people like to, uh, to, to describe God as a God of justice. But the first and only time I see God introduce himself fully, he introduced himself as merciful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. The Lord God... Full of grace and mercy. That's how he introduced himself to Moses. When Moses was when, when Christ was passing and the back part, the back part of Christ, Moses was able to see the Lord, the Lord introduced himself, the Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious. That's how God introduced himself. But when we introduce God, we introduce him as a God of mercy. When he introduced him uh, of justice, when he introduced himself, he introduced himself as a God of mercy. He wants to be known as a God of mercy. So the grumblers in the church, when Paul started to preach, is not, is this not, he who destroyed those who call, <laughs> who call on the name in Jerusalem and, ha and, and has, has come here uh, 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 for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. So how is this guy preaching? And he mess up the brain of the members. And, and when Saul himself, when Saul himself Finish his sojourn in Damascus. Now he's converted, filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the church, went back to Jerusalem now, where he was originally from. He had problem over there. The Bible says, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried, look at the text, he, he what? He what? He tried to join the disciples. 
But they were all afraid. Oh, they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a. And I can't blame them. Can you? So he had he joined. Elders in the church followed the preacher. He joined the team. He signed up to get involved. Are you with me? But he has some problem. What is his problem? His past. Help me preach it. What is his problem? His past. His past. You know what a lot, why a lot of people don't join up? Why? Come help me preach, no man. Their past. Their past. I, I, I ain't going up front because people know what I used to do. I, I, I ain't joining because people know what used to happen, where I used to live. Uh, people know my past, so I'm going to just keep myself quiet down there. Hey, hey, and you allow your past to dictate your future. And listen to me, that's what the devil wants to happen. So they were using the apostles' past uh, not, to, not to embrace him in the ministry. But God saw something in Paul that nobody else had seen. Amen. And I want to talk to somebody in Nairobi. I don't care who you are, and I don't know you, but I want to tell you, God sees something in you that you yourself don't even see. Every one of you, God sees something in you. And it doesn't matter how bad your past may have been. God will ignore your past because he's interested in your future. Is the church with me? He saw something in Paul. And what, a, what an amazing person Paul turns out to be. Read my lips. There are 27 books in the New Testament. This good for nothing guy has written 13 of them. He's the most prolific writer of the Bible. Half, more than half of the New Testament was written by this guy. Praise the Lord that God rescued him. Hey, 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 hey. This, in the New Testament, the apostolic church exploded. Why? Because this guy gave his life into ministry. He became one of the best pastors and best evangelists. There are about 12 churches that Paul himself either started or enriched. And I can go through the list. At Antioch was his first church where he, was, where he started his ministry. And then he built up the church at Corinth. And he built up the church at... Ephesus and he built up the church at Philippi and he built up the church at Thessalonica and he built up the church at Colossa and he built up the church at Galatia and he built up the church at Rome where he finally died incredible evangelist now you saw now you understand why in spite of his past God went for him because God saw something in him. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God sees something in you. Yes. Yes. There is something he can work with in you. I want nobody right off your past. Hey, hey, so when, let me wrap this up for you. So when, 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 when they challenge Paul. And by the way, hey, let me talk to the pastors. Pastors, you know this, you studied in college. That, 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 that the, the apostles themselves challenge Paul. Peter himself challenged Paul. And, and Paul, Paul is in no argument with him. Paul says, I know I'm the least of the apostles. I didn't walk with Jesus. I didn't talk with Jesus. You guys may have more to brag about more than me. But I'm the least of the apostles. And when they challenge him, Paul says to them in Philippians 3 verse 13, 12, from verse 12, he says, Not that, help me read, not that I have already attained. I, I'm not believing, I'm not behaving as if I've reached where I want to go. I have not reached where I want to go spiritually. I'm still growing, he says, or I'm already perfected. But one thing I know, uh, but I am what? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus lay hold on me. I am not 
giving up this fight no matter how much opposition I get inside or outside the church. I'm not giving up this fight, Paul says in verse 13. He says, brethren, come on, help me. He says what? Brethren, I do not count myself apprehended, contained, or shackled. But one thing I do, help me read. One thing I do, I what? Forgetting those things. Man, I wish I had time to talk about this. Because he has a lot of things behind him. Oh, Lord of mercy. Hey, hey. He has a lot of stuff behind him. And Paul says, do not, when I'm preaching, when I'm doing God's work, don't remind me of the things behind me. Are you with me? Because I have what? I forget those things that are behind me. I want to talk to those of you who decide to give your heart to the Lord and get signed up. Get signed up. Hear the preacher. Hear me, preacher. Hey, there are some stuff that are behind you. Everybody sitting in church here, everybody, including the preacher, we all have stuff behind us. Hey, hey, hey. Paul says, yeah, I used to drink, but, but that is behind me. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to gamble, but that is behind me. I used to be a womanizer. By the way, you know that term? I used to be a womanizer, but that is behind me. I used to beat my wife, but that is behind me. I used to do all manner of evil, but that is behind me. Don't let anybody remind you of what is behind you. Tell them it's behind me and I'm pressing forward for the high calling in Jesus. Because, listen to the preacher. Satan, shh. Satan plants some people in this church. Let me talk. Let me say it one more time. Satan plants some people in this church and every church. Their job is to remind you of the past. When you start to live right, they remind you. Oh, stop behaving as if you're holy because we know where you're coming from. When you see that happen, just say, get behind me, Satan. Amen. I'm pressing towards the mark. of I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Help me read, Paul says. I am pressing towards the goal of the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Amen. You have to do the same. You have to do the same. Paul says, Paul says, you can talk anything you want to talk. You can do anything you want to do. I have a message for everybody. Paul says, I can tell you one thing. Ain't nothing gonna separate this guy. Hey! Ain't nothing gonna separate this guy from God. Romans 8, 28. For, help me read. For I am, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, Paul says, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall separate me from a God. Are you prepared to make that statement? Paul says, nothing, nobody, come with your schemes. It will not shake me. Hey, 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 come with your stories. It will not move me. Come with your plans. It will not destroy me. Because I've made a commitment. I've made a commitment. I've made a commitment for me to live. Is Christ. And to die. Is it? So there's nothing you can do against me. That's the state all of us must reach. When we sign up. To be a child of the living God. So he says, he says, he says in 1 Corinthians um, 4 verse 8, he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He says, we have flesh and blood, but God has a treasure in us. In every single one of you, you're a treasure to God. Is the church hearing me? Yes. And he says, we are, hey, hey, help me read. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. Problems, 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 problems. Yet we are not crushed. 
We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. You can't get rid of us because we're anchored in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what it is required in these last days for those of us who sign up. Finally, he gave his life for the cause. He gave his life for the cause. Arrested and tried. Put in prison in Rome. And hours Hours before his execution, this man of God, this incredible stalwart of Almighty God, whom God picked up and turned around, who dedicated his life to the service of God, who on the day when the roll is called up yonder, there'll be so many people who will answer the call because of this one man. On the day of his execution, he took out his pen and he wrote a final letter to his young protege, Timothy. And from the prison cell, with trembling hands, he wrote, For I am Already, already, already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. My pulpits will be silent. My pen will be frozen. My, vo my voice will be no more. My ministry has come to an end. He writes, But I think I have fought a good fight. Amen. And I believe with all my heart I have finished the race. And praise the Lord in spite of all that they do to me. I have kept the faith. Amen. And he says, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, brethren, oh, brethren, catch this, catch this, catch this, catch this. Catch this. Paul did not say, finally, I hope there is a crown for me. Paul, Paul, hey, hey, can I talk to somebody in the church? I don't want you to sit in church as a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in these last days and say, I hope there's a crown for me. Too, too many members in my church are not sure whether there is a crown or not. And if that is so, that's an indictment on your soul. It means you are not experiencing the joy that salvation brings. Paul says, there is laid up for me. I'm not asking anybody. Ah, let me wrap it up here. I'm not, Pastor Bushi, I'm not asking anybody. I'm not in any doubt. I know with certainty that there is a crown laid up for me which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And then he said something that warms my heart, Pastor. He says, but it's not for me only. 
Amen. In other words, there's a crown up there for him, and there's one for me, and there's one for you. And not for, help me read, one, two, three, and not me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. Amen. What an amazing story. What an amazing story. They drag him out of his prison cell. They brought him to the executional hall. They laid him on the table. And the axe man sharpened his axe. He took his head off. That's the end of Paul. But thank God for this statement. When the righteous judge comes and begins to call the roll up yonder from the mossy old grave where the pilgrims lay, the song says they shall be open as wide as before. And the million that sleep in the mighty deep will rise to life once more. And in that number, Paul will come back. Amen. That's why we are in church. If you, by God's grace, willing to do the same, the same thing will happen to you. You will go down in a mossy old grave but if you go down putting your trust in God, when the resurrection morning comes, you will be in the number. You'll be in the number. I'm finished. I'm finished. So let me, let me do what I've always done every night. This is a unique call. I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to join me. That nice little song. I don't know how it starts. The mossy old grave where the pilgrims lay shall be open as wide as before. You know the song? And the million that sleep in the mighty deep shall. That's the song. Will he is coming, coming, coming soon, I know. Coming back to this earth again, and the weary pilgrims will to glory, will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Now we're going to sing this. Can I ask all of you to rise? We're going to sing this song. I'm going to invite my pastors to join me again. All my pastors. All my pastors. Join me again, please. I want you to hear me when I say this. It is not an easy road to work for the Lord. It's not a bed of roses to get involved. It requires sacrifice. It requires personal sacrifice. It requires some pain sometimes. Some heartache sometimes, some tribulation sometimes. All, all of the disciples made sacrifice that we could never even imagine. They all died for the sake of God. They are buried somewhere. There's going to be a resurrection morning, and the children of God will come forth. 
And on that day, you want to make sure that you're in the number. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you in the name of Jesus. This is an unusual call. If by the grace of Almighty God, it is your commitment and desire and public expression to say, God, to say, God, I don't think like Paul, I am, I'm not perfect. I don't think I reached yours yet. <clears throat> but tonight, <clears throat> tonight, I just, I just want to let you know, God, I, w I want heaven, no. Sign me up. Sign me up. Sign me up because I want to be part of your team. And I'm recommitting and I'm rededicating my life to you. And if I perish, I perish. But it is my desire to work for you. It is my desire to dedicate my resources to you. It is my desire by the grace of the living God until death comes and let them bury me trusting in you because I know there's a crown that laid up for me if the spirit of God bids you <clears throat> and it is your determination to make that commitment to him I'm going to invite you to join me up here as we sing how sweet are the tidings that is your commitment. God, like the Apostle Paul, I've been, I've been holding back, but as of tonight, I am dedicating my entire life to your work. I'm surrendering everything to you. Not tomorrow, right now. God bless you. God bless you. Sweet dedicating God, dedicating my life count on me Jesus count on me Jesus count on me Jesus count on me 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 I have not been as I supposed to be but count on me when camp meeting is finished I'm a different person count on me Count on me, Jesus. Count on me. My time, my resources, my health, my wealth. Count on me, Jesus. It's going to be rough, Lord. But count on me. Count on me. Count on me, Jesus. Count on me. Count on me. Count on me, Jesus. Count on me. God bless you. Count on me. I know it's going to be rough, Lord. I know it's going to be rough. But I'm prepared to make the sacrifice. And if I perish, I perish. Count on me. See anybody else? The mossy old grave. The mossy old grave. See anybody else? See anybody else? Count on me. Shall be open as wide as before. Count on me, count on me, count on me, count on me. And the meal of the sea. Count on me. I am giving you, Lord. I'm giving you. I'm healing you. Giving you. Oh, it's coming. Yes, Jesus. Count on me. Renewed person, renewed person, and the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. God bless you, dear coming. Anybody else? There will be little hearts 
church here tonight feeling like Paul feeling as if there is no hope but tonight as the word of God spoken to your heart it is your desired expression to say Jesus I may not even be a baptized member of this church but thank you for bringing me here raise my hands to heaven to ask you to help me transform my life help me to be a powerhouse for you help me to help somebody to make it ready before you come I'm just wondering is there anybody else in this audience tonight you have not yet given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ but in the name of Jesus you would like us to include you in our purse that God can use you powerfully. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if that describes you. Is there anybody like that? Just raise your hands wherever you are. You may not have been a member of this church, but God has brought you here tonight. I want to include you in my prayer. Is there anybody else like that? Just raise those hands. I will recognize it and include you in my prayer. Final call. Is there anybody else like that? Is there anybody else? And my last call. few months ago God bless you come on up a few months ago I asked my church a question I said how many of you are dead certain that there's a crown in heaven for you how many of you are dead certain that you will make it in the kingdom of God. I'm 
the result was not too happy. And as a pastor, I was troubled. I was troubled. I was troubled. And I'm going to ask the same thing here. I don't want you to show your hands. I was troubled because I want my members to understand that when you walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus, when you ask forgiveness, He forgives you. I want you to understand when God promises you something, He's not slack concerning His promises. I want you to embrace the confidence that there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. So hear me in my final call to you down there, brethren. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want you to do an assessment of your soul right now as you stand. Do an assessment of your soul right now as you stand. And there may be stuff at work, stuff at home, stuff at church. There may be things, situations, circumstances that cause you not to feel too sure about your soul salvation. Before you leave here tonight, I want you to leave with that certainty. So I am going to extend to you a call. Any one of you, every one of you, when you do that assessment, if you are not too sure that if you were to die tonight, that you will not make it in the kingdom when God's come. If you can't be too sure, if you're not certain, then this call is for you. I'm going to ask the praise team to sing the last stanza. And I'm going to ask every member of this church, who whatever the reason is, there's a little doubt in your mind. We're not going home with that doubt. I'm going to ask you to come on up and join the folks up here and join the pastors up here because we're going to pray for you and we're going to put you in God's hand because you're going home with confidence tonight. So as we sing this next stanza, I'm going to invite you, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. If there's any little doubt lingering, come on up, come on up. I'm going to put it to rest tonight, put it to rest tonight, put it to rest tonight. Come on up, God bless you, come on up. Hallelujah. Come on up, come on up, come on up. If there's any doubt in your heart, come on up. If there's any lingering doubt, come on up. Come on up. If there's any lingering, Lord, I'm in your church, but I'm not sure. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up. You may be serving even as an officer of the church, but there's a little lingering. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Whatever the circumstances, come on up. You may be singing on the choir, there's a little lingering. Come on up. From the balcony, there's a lingering. Come on up. Come on up, 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 come on up. Let's flood the altar of the living God. And the we God bless you. Come on up. Leaving Nairobi Central with no, no doubt in their mind that there is a crown. Come on up, 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 come come on up, 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 come Anybody else? Is there anybody else? God bless you. Coming back to this world. God bless you. See you coming. See you coming. Anybody else? Anybody else? Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sure
faithful. faithful we all shall be there. Praise the Lord. Nairobi Central will be there. Karangata will be there. New Life will be there. We all will be there. For the last time we sing, is coming. Praise the Lord. Coming, coming soon. I know. Coming back to this world again. And the Not say like Paul, I know there's a crown. They decide they ain't going home tonight until they put that doubt in front of Jesus. Is God, I ain't going home until you give me certainty. Whatever that causes that doubt, whatever causes that doubt. Pastor Ambuchi, I'm going to ask you to pray for that group group that are members of this church perhaps maybe members of another church and you're visiting but this doubt lingers in your heart and it robs you of the joy of salvation like Paul you can't say I know but before you leave here tonight you will say I know that there's a crown laid up for me irrespective of my past I know and then and then pastor I'm going to ask you to pray for the first set of folks who came up with a determination and a commitment to surrender their entire life to Jesus. Like Paul, if I perish, I perish. Just take me, God, and use me for your purpose. But at the end, just make me ensure that I'm in my number. And also, in that prayer, I'm going to pray, Pastor, for those who have indicated that come Sabbath morning, they will be in the baptismal pool. And the church say amen. What a rejoicing it's going to be. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, our Creator and our Redeemer, what a joy you have brought into our hearts through the life of your Son, Apostle Paul. Yes, Lord. What assurance you have restored in our Christian experience tonight through the ministry of your servant, Apostle Paul. Father, we are so thankful that you called Paul and you used him as a vessel and through his testimony, Father God, we are so delighted to know the conviction that, Lord, you put into his heart. And as we stand in your very holy presence at this hour, Father God, we have stood that you may give us the same conviction that will drive us the rest of our lives. Yes, Jesus. No matter what will happen, Tonight, tomorrow, this month, this year, we know our salvation is safe in Jesus Christ. Father God, I want to thank you for the members who have come to listen to your word. Others are members of this church, Nairobi Central. Others are members of Seventh Adventist Church, different churches, but they have come to listen to your word. 
I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, baptize each one of us yes. with your Holy Spirit. Amen. That even as we leave this place, we can testify like Paul, I know my Redeemer lived. Amen. Father God, how I beg that Lord, may you help each one of us to be solidly in this conviction that we live for you, we'll walk and work for you as long as you will give us life to live. I pray, Almighty God, fill each one of us and solidify this conviction in our hearts that, Lord, we shall live for you and to live for you is gain. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, how I pray that may you help each one of us. Father God, I pray that from today henceforth that we shall never never allow any doubts in our lives because Jesus Christ who died for us he lives in heaven Amen. and with that assurance Father God we will live with him now and as we wait for him to come for us Father God I pray that may you bless each one of us where we have doubted you oh. in the past Father I beg in Jesus name forgive us and cleanse us and, and may you Get us into these roots solidly that never again shall we look behind. We shall ever look forward Amen. where our salvation cometh from. Amen. Bless your servant that you have used tonight to bring these words unto us. May these words make a difference in our Christian experience now and forever. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our loving Father in heaven, this evening, we are in the whole presence, we are in your holy place. We want to thank you because you love us. We want to thank you for you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We want to thank you because you do understand us. You do understand our lives. And there is a special thing in our lives that you want to disclose to us mm -hmm. so that we may become useful vessels for your work. We want to thank you for this kind of a message that we have received this evening. We want to thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the heart of your servant. He has made it clear to us that you have seen something special in our lives. That special thing you want to make use it for your cause. We want to thank you for the group that has just come to the stage. Some of us, God we have come because we have seen that you understand that there is a special thing that in our lives that you want to make use of it. Our hearts have been kindled and we want to pray that the purpose for which we have come to the stage here may be fulfilled in us and may be done according to your own will as we join hands to work together to work for you, to be witnesses for your holy name, to hasten your coming. And this will be uh, effected in our lives, and this will be realized in our lives, and it will be done according to your own will, only when we will allow the Holy Spirit to continue encouraging us making us to stand firm for the work. And at the end of it, you will come soon and take us home. So bless this group abundantly. May the, they, their hearts remain kindled. And as they endeavor to work for you, bless them abundantly until the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And amongst this group, there are those who have accepted you as their personal savior mm -hmm. and after having been baptized they are ready to go out and work for the
bless them abundantly. And in Jesus' name, we want to pray that if there is anything as a stumbling block that the devil put in place, may it be removed by the powers of heaven. Let them see your glory this coming Sabbath. May them receive the Spirit in a very special way as we joy, they join us. And together, we will be worshiping you. We will be working with you. We will be sharing together with you. And we will be preparing ourselves for your soon coming. We want to thank you. And as we continue listening to the messages that have been prepared for us, Heavenly Father, make us not to miss any day an hour until the end of this week. Bless us abundantly and may we experience the presence of your Holy Spirit and may we be prepared for the kingdom of heaven and may we be strengthened in our faith so that we may stand firm, immovable, not because of our strength, but by the grace that you have shown us through Jesus Christ. We want to thank you as we part ways. We want to pray that you take care of each one of us tonight. If it's your will, we meet again and continue encouraging each other for the words of salvation. Glory and honor be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.